am Artemia Fabre Sarandona. I'm from Mexico. I'm a social anthropologist. I do judicial anthropology and I work in human rights for indigenous peoples. And I basically in the judicial system, I work in, in, with inmates in jail uh, doing some uh, legal advice and sometimes defending them working with your families and I'm president of uh, Dialogo y Movimiento which is an ONGO uh, in, from Mexico and we work in Campeche and we are a team of uh, lawyers, anthropologists and interpreters basically and people that also work in communication and in, in teaching. We teach uh, public ser servants and communities and also um, interpreters. We help, um, we have a, um, we work with another institute, uh, national institute to work in teaching interpreters so they can be credit or certified interpreters. So we do that. Ah, well, um, even if we've, we've been gaining some uh, rights for indigenous peoples which now are installed in the constitution since the first ones were in 1992 um, which is like a shame that we it took so much time to have them in the constitution and then in uh, 2011 we have um, a reform law which includes better for indigenous people but not quite all set so and um, basically what I can tell you is through all these years what we've been seeing is not a lot of changes um, not in the judicial system not in the, all the public health services for indigenous peoples like one of the rights that we are always um, trying to set up that it is there is the linguistic rights for indigenous peoples. So that means that they need interpreters and sometimes translators so that things can be written in their languages. And you cannot see that in, in the public services, in education, in health, in judicial system. And so, and now population, uh, um, indigenous peoples are fighting and still fighting for their uh, land and territories and right now it's one of the biggest issues here in Mexico. Well, one of the biggest one is um, education, uh, intercultural education. That means that things have been, uh, should be given in either languages, you know, Spanish and uh, the language that they speak in, the, in those areas which are like um, 62 languages, basically 58 that are active and um, education because they don't know they have this right. <laughs> and and the other one is that there is not in put uh, order. We have the law, but then you don't have the resources, the economical resources, the people to do that. And they are not willing to do it still. Um, may I give you an example? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. For example, you need interpreters uh, for judicial system, but also you need it in health. But I'll go in judicial. So in judicial, you need interpreters. But these interpreters, by law, they need to be qualified interpreters. They don't want to pay for uh, the. Um, to teach, to form people, and to be an interpreter. It's not, it's not only that you, you talk the language that makes you an interpreter, an intercultural interpreter of, in a judicial system. Judicial system needs that the people are qualified to understand the law, the technical words of law, and then translate it, interpret it to the other word in, so that in her own, in their own language, they can understand that word. I'm going to give you another example. For there, there is no a word that says constitution. So 
in order that they understand what does that mean, you need to interpret that culturally so they can understand what does the, the mean of the word constitution. So if you are not prepared to be an intercultural interpreter, you are going to miss a lot of words and probably the person that needs that the, the interpreter is the voice is not going to give the, the exact words so the, the person that is the victim or the possible guilty one can defend himself or express himself. Okay, the, the work uh, my organization does, our organization does, is that we work in, in, in the, the penal law and we work in jail to help indigenous people uh, to have a due process so we read the um, the legal files and we see if the, they have complied with the due process if they haven't uh, complied with the due process then we uh, do all all that is in our hands to help these people um, gain their liberty what well, if, if it's possible or that they they can go in parole because sometimes they don't even care if they they already are, are ready to go in parole, so they don't let them out. And we do a lot of work um, with uh, the public servants to, to, to tell them that they need to comply with the law to do this. So we work with interpreters. We have... Um, so basically, in our uh, in our office, we work with a Chol language interpreter, which is from Chiapas, but we work in Campeche because we have a lot of people from Chiapas that come to Campeche to live 30 years ago, and they still um, talk their their in their indigenous languages. And so we have also Mayan people, and we go to the to the to the jail, we talk to the inmates, and we try always to do it with an interpreter, so they can understand, because we uh, give them uh, legal advice, so they can understand where the process is, if there are possibilities for them uh, to do some legal procedure, or they cannot do it anymore, they have to wait and help them sometimes in health issues because they don't take them to the doctor uh, or uh, always offer to help them with the, to the with interpretation and when we take a case uh, we go also with an interpreter so we work like for example a lawyer an interpreter and me as an anthropologist so what we do is that all the, the legal stuff that we do for an indigenous people, we do it working together. So uh, the, the lawyer does the, the legal stuff, and I, as an anthropologist, include all the intercultural issues and all the, 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 the laws that has to be put there so they can have their due process. Otherwise, there is not a due process for indigenous people. Yeah, we have, well, we we usually work in penal law, okay? But now we are trying we are open because of the need of the people. So we usually work in, in jail with inmates. But now because they start to know us, they the, the family start starts to give our name. So we receive a case of a, of a teacher in in. Um, in another area which is not penal, so it's civil um, law and merchandise. So we are working and we help this woman. Um, I don't know the word in English, it's an amparo. I don't know if you have that in um, Spain. Um, uh, yes? Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about the word. So we did this amparo for her, and in there we put all the, the the indigenous laws that were not 
reported were missing, for example. They didn't use an interpreter to talk to her. They uh, didn't went in a proper way to hand all the notifications to her house. They didn't go with an interpreter. And also, she couldn't understand all the legal stuff because the lack of an interpreter. And also, because the lack of the um, lawyers, the public uh, lawyers, uh, do not know about the indigenous culture and the ways they do arrangements between them, um, economical, business um, arrangements. So there was a lack of information there that it means it was not a due process because when you are with indigenous uh, population, you need to include the cultural differences. And the cultural differences means that they need to know the culture of these people, if they are Mayans, if they are Chol, if they are Wichol, if they are Zapotex, doesn't matter where they come, you need to know their cultural references. Otherwise, you are um, doing law um, with the absence, basically, of the person that you are trying either help or put into deal. So we did that, and also we have another case um, doing the same things that there were no um, linguistic rights were there. There were no the cultural pertinence in installed there. The lawyers and all the staff of the judicial system do not care and do not know about their culture. What they prefer as indigenous is that they are poor or they are ignorant because they don't speak Spanish. Hmm. So we try to change this view, which is very racist and discriminatory. So in, in, instead of that, we're trying to talk about, about uh, the legally that they have rights and th those rights are valid. And they need to be there, otherwise there's no due process there. So basically, there are two ways, but one is institutions that by law, they need to obey the law. Uh, if you don't do that, there is no due process and there is no legal, legal uh, society. There are no rules. So one is that the government, all from, from the top, the federal to the local uh, government, they need to have resources first and the infrastructure to have interpreters and uh, accredited or certified um, interpreters. They need to pay all the, uh, the teachings, all the work that you need to do in order to have uh, professionals. That, that is one. And also, they have to have uh, interpreters hired. Uh, sometimes they have to have it hired into the, those institutions because of the level of need of those interpreters. So they don't have that in, in place. And um, also, they need to start doing things that we ha we should have been doing for years, to have um, videos, to have information in video in, in the indigenous languages. So they, have, they are informed of indigenous rights and in general rights, human rights, in their own languages. So if you don't have all those things there, then how, how you are going to know that you have the right to have an interpreter? If you come from a, a far away uh, community with nobody uh, barely speaking Spanish, and you come here, and what people said to you, if, for example, they will say to you, uh, do you ascribe as indigenous uh, peoples. Uh, so that word, ascription, to ascribe as an ethnic group, those words are very technical words. Those words for a, a person that comes from a community doesn't mean a thing. 
they don't understand a word. So we have to change the way we interact with indigenous peoples. We need to talk in a way that they can understand that we that we use uh, as a Spanish language and indigenous languages in a way that they can understand that the cultural difference that there is there. Uh, this is a, it, this is sometimes complex because we think that we all think the same way, but that is not true. Indigenous people have another way of sometimes doing things and thinking differently. But if that's different, that doesn't mean it's wrong or right, it's simply different. So we need to put a public um, issues there so that we can have communication, better communication with indigenous people.